welcome back guys now in this part 2 of ovarian tumors let's discuss about the germ cell tumors guys what are the examples of germ cell tumors guys teratoma dysgerminoma yolk sac tumor embryonal cancer choriocarcinoma and a mixed variant okay so now in this video we are going to discuss about main important germ cell tumors so let's go further guys before going further let me tell you one point see usually ovarian cancers okay they are seen somewhere around 60 to 70 years of age okay usually ovarian cancers they are very rare and that too they are going to be seen in old age groups but do you know something this germ cell tumors they are going to be seen somewhere around 10 to 30 years of age so presents very early early in onset so germ cell tumors they presents very much early and very important point to be noted here is that see these germ cell cancers and there are certain tumor markers okay why am see tumors will be having tumor markers that's something normal but for exams they will be asking you they will be asking you something like hcg is the tumor marker of okay something like that ldh is the main tumor marker of something like that so let's go further so what is the first germ cell tumor guys the first germ cell tumor is teratoma we have seen teratoma but here there is no such thing as teratoma why because the teratomas do not have tumor markers having said that what is the second tumor guys after teratoma as there is no tumor marker let's go with the dysgerminoma so what are the tumor markers of dysgerminoma i used to remember something like that d for d d l d d l d h something like that okay so dysgerminoma the main tumor marker is l d h but also here you can have hcg and plap placental alkaline phosphatase okay something like that plap placental alkaline phosphatase but the main important marker is dysgerminoma d l d h so ldh lactate dehydrogenase is a main important a tumor marker guys here itself i just want to put something in your mind hcg is seen everywhere all germ cell tumors have this hcg you can see here hcg is here hcg hcg but hcg is not seen with yolk sac tumor so hcg is the one tumor marker which is not seen with the yolk sac tumor but the hcg is seen with dysgerminoma embryonal cancer choriocarcinoma this is something very much important again i will show you don't worry now after dysgerminoma let's talk about the yolk sac tumor if i am talking about the yolk sac where do you expect yolk sac to be yolk sac somewhere in the fetus can i say something like that yolk sac do you have yolk sac no fetus yes so yolk sac fetus that's the first thing that's going to come to my mind alpha fetus protein alpha feto protein so the main tumor marker is alpha feto protein and you can also see the lactate dehydrogenase and alpha 1 antitrypsin but the main is alpha feto protein but fetus before stage embryo embryo fetus and all the, i think they are all the same kind of category so in embryonal cancer also i'm saying it is alpha feto protein embryo fetus yolk sac fetus so yolk sac tumors alpha feto protein embryonal cancers alpha feto protein i have already said you that hcg is present everywhere except yolk sac tumors now choriocarcinoma if i am saying choriocarcinoma chorion means placenta we all know that placenta is associated with the production of hcg beta hcg so choriocarcinoma simple hcg and i have also said you hcg is everywhere simply you can say choriocarcinoma hcg is a tumor marker so these are very very important points so different types of germ cell tumors which are associated with different tumor markers again i am repeating dysgerminoma ldh yolk sac tumor alpha feto protein the main important tumor marker after that embryonal cancer embryo same fetus alpha feto protein choriocarcinoma it is hcg now important point is teratoma please concept please understand here okay teratoma it is not associated with any tumor marker no tumor marker ldh see these are some important exceptions ldh can be seen in all germ cell tumors it can be seen with all germ cell tumors to certain extent okay to certain extent 
but mainly ldh is the tumor marker of dysgenminoma we know that but ldh is not seen with choriocarcinoma and embryonal cancer okay so ldh is a main marker of dysgenminoma but it is seen with most of the germ cell tumors but this is not seen with the choriocarcinoma and embryonal cancer important mcq we have to buy heart this now alpha fetoprotein alpha fetoprotein seen in all the germ cell tumors to, to certain extent but it is not seen with the choriocarcinoma and dysgerminoma okay see in dysgerminoma there is no alpha fetoprotein and in choriocarcinoma also there is no alpha fetoprotein so usually alpha fetoprotein it is seen where in yolk sac tumors embryonal cancer i have already said this hcg it is seen with all the germ cell tumors except yolk sac tumor see in yolk sac tumor there is no hcg here here hcg is there here hcg is there here hcg is there but there is no hcg over here very important mcq okay so after seeing this let's start with the individual germ cell tumor so what is our individual germ cell tumor guys the first thing is teratoma now this teratomas can be benign in nature it can be malignant in nature see i am talking about the benign teratoma the benign teratoma should be called as the mature cystic teratoma or dermoid cyst so what exactly is this dermoid cyst dermoid cyst is nothing but a benign teratoma which can also be called as mature cystic teratoma mature is something good but immature immature fellows they are dangerous so immature immature please concentrate immature cystic teratoma is malignant okay malignant is the most common germ cell cancer see i'm using the word cancer cancer means malignant please remember the first germ cell tumor which we are going to discuss right now it is dermoid cyst so dermoid cyst is the most common germ cell tumor most common germ cell tumor no doubt and that too dermoid cyst is a benign tumor okay so it's a benign in nature but if i am talking about immature cystic teratoma then it is a malignant and if someone ask you what is the most common malignant germ cell tumor malignant germ cell cancer it is immature cystic teratoma let me just uh, have a recap okay let let me just ask you some questions what is the most common ovarian tumor most common ovarian tumor serous cystadenoma epithelial cell tumor serous cystadenoma what is the most common ovarian cancer serous cystadenocarcinoma something like that In the same way please remember here most common ovarian tumor of reproductive age see it's very much important most common ovarian tumor of reproductive age is not serous cystadenoma here it is dermoid cyst okay reproductive age most commonly it is serous cystadenoma most common ovarian tumor serous cystadenoma most common ovarian cancer serous cystadenocarcinoma but if they ask you what is the most common ovarian tumor of reproductive age it is dermoid cyst okay most common ovarian tumor during pregnancy dermoid cyst most common ovarian tumor to undergo torsion dermoid cyst or mature cystic teratoma see on my top you can see this dermoid cyst you can see this hairs inside the dermoid cyst you can see all these hairs so why all these hairs are present and sometimes you can see a teeth also teeth what i'm trying to put into your mind is this dermoid cyst or this dermoid tumor this ovarian tumor contains it contains three components of the germ cell layers okay germ layers ectoderm endoderm mesoderm that you know so all the three components of the germ cell layers are present in which ovarian tumors it is dermoid cyst see endodermal components like bone and teeth can be seen mesodermal components like sebaceous secretions can be seen and ectodermal components like you know most common components like hair and endocrine glands are seen so these dermoid cysts are the ovarian tumors which contains all the components of the three germ layers again i am repeating these are the tumors most common ovarian tumors to undergo torsion most common ovarian tumors of pregnancy and most common ovarian tumors in the reproductive age group which is very much important to be kept in mind
after that see again try to understand this is not something more common see if someone ask you most common ovarian cancer during pregnancy most common ovarian cancer during pregnancy are you going to answer dermoid cyst no why because dermoid cyst itself is a benign in nature so most common ovarian tumor of pregnancy then what is most common ovarian cancer of pregnancy that we will see in the next slide don't worry so most common ovarian tumor of reproductive age most common uh, ovarian tumor during pregnancy and most common ovarian tumor to undergo torsion all of them are dermoid cyst now let's see these dermoid cysts we have already seen that they are benign in nature they are benign in nature but they may change into cancers they may change into cancers what's the risk almost 0.2 to 2 percent chance as that these dermoid cysts may turn into cancers true and what is the most common site for the malignancy what is the most common site where this a dermoid cyst is turning into cancer in this dermoid cyst there is a region which is highlighted in this yellow dotted line that is known as rokitansky protuberance this rokitansky protuberance is the area where more likely the malignant transformation is happening so please keep this point in mind and the malignant transformation if there is a malignant transformation see if there is a malignant transformation then the cancer which is going to arise is the squamous cell carcinoma okay if there is a cancer then the cancer will be a squamous cell carcinoma of the ovary okay that's something important point to keep in mind now see the moment i think about the demoid cyst the mnemonic which comes to my mind is a road trip road trip r o a d t r i p r o a d t r i p trip road trip why why because see this r o just reminds me about the rokitansky protuberance the most common site for the malignancy to occur and this tri trip t r i this t r i represents me the tri components okay the three germ layers are going to be present in this dermoid cyst again dermoid cyst is benign okay and again t will specifically mention me this t mentions me about the torsion why because this is the tumor which most commonly undergoes torsion ovarian tumor to undergo torsion dermoid cyst t and r r will again separately remind me this is the most common ovarian tumor in a reproductive age women and p p separately remind me that this is the ovarian tumor most common ovarian tumor during pregnancy so this is all a sum up about the dermoid cyst which is a benign tumor malignant will be called as immature cystic teratoma which is the most common germ cell cancer okay most common germ cell cancer not overall most common cancer overall most common cancer is serous cystadenocarcinoma which is a epithelial ovarian tumor but in germ cell tumors the most common germ cell cancer or the most common malignancies in the germ cell tumors is immature cystic teratoma okay now let's discuss about the ultrasonographic findings in a dermoid cyst ultrasonographic findings what you will see in ultrasonography see the most common the most common appearance is a dermoid plug is a dermoid plug or ovarian dermoid what exactly is this see if i am doing ultrasonography you can see an area which is just protruding something like this okay protruding into the cyst see all this is the cystic space and into the cystic space there is a protuberance so this is known as the dermoid plug okay so what what exactly is this protuberance it is rokitansky's protuberance okay rokitansky's protuberance so that's the most common ultrasonographic finding so what is the most common ultrasonographic finding it is a dermoid plug because of this rokitansky nodule and second most common appearance is a tip of the iceberg sign so what exactly is this tip of the iceberg sign see if this ovarian dermoid if it's having this hyper like you know ecogenic areas uh, ecogenic substances like serum teeth and all that hair and stuff see because of this ecogenic areas it's going to create a shadow which will mask the tumor which will mask the cyst so only certain part of the cyst is visible so if there are ecogenic contents inside the tumor that ecogenic contents will create a shadow that shadow will mask most of the tumor so that only you can see some part of tumor in an iceberg 
See, only whatever you are seeing in an iceberg is a very small part. See, there is something very much deep inside, inside the water, which you are not able to see. In the same way, in the ultrasonography, you can only see some part of the cyst because most of the cyst is getting shadowed by echogenic areas. So, that will give tip of the iceberg sign, which is very, very important. They will ask you, tip of the iceberg sign, dermoid cyst, dermoid plug, same with dermoid cyst. And along with that, along with that, there can be dot dash pattern. See, what exactly is this dot dash pattern? Dot dash pattern is ultrasonographic finding seen in a patient who is having this uh, a dermoid cyst because of this floating hairs. The floating hairs will cause these kind of a dotted dash pattern. You see, you can see this all these dotted dashes. Okay, so these dotted dashes are because of hairs which are floating inside the cyst. So, what are the ultrasonographic findings which you can see in a patient with this dermoid cyst guys? Dermoid plug, tip of the iceberg sign, dotted dash appearance. Okay, something very much important for the exams. After this mature cystic teratoma which is dermoid cyst, now let's continue with the dysgerminoma. Okay, just wait. Before dysgerminoma, now let's see what is the management of dermoid cyst. Now, if there is this dermoid cyst, what we can do? Simple cystectomy. Okay, simple cystectomy can be done. If a family is not completed, what if family is completed? Now, why we are doing oophorectomy means removing the ovaries. Okay, removing the ovaries. If the family is completed, it is shown that we have to do the oophorectomy. Why? Why? Because there is some malignant potential that this dermoid cyst may turn into cancer. There is almost 0 0.2 to 2% risk of malignancy is there. So, if the family is completed, if the family is completed, then go with the oophorectomy. If family is not completed, just do the cystectomy. So, that's the management for the dermoid cyst. Now, let's talk about the dysgerminoma. This dysgerminoma is a fleshy tumor fleshy lobulated tumor now what's the most common germ cell tumor most common germ cell tumor is dermoid cyst now this is the second most common germ cell tumor which is a fleshy lobulated with this creamy color now important points which you have to keep in mind here are it's a ovarian counterpart for the seminoma see this dysgerminoma is called as known to be a ovarian counterpart for testicular seminoma. What does that mean by? It's the same kind of histopathological appearance. The seminoma cells are more similar to the cells which are seen in dysgerminoma. So, histopathologically, they are almost similar. So, in a man, it is called a seminoma. In a female, it is dysgerminoma. And dysgerminomas are the most common ovarian cancers in this genetic gonads, in a dysgenetic gonads, where the gonads have not, pro not properly formed. In a dysgenetic gonads are the gonads which were lying totally inside the abdomen, okay, they are not descending down. In that undescended gonads, if they turn into cancer, they are going to turn into dysgerminoma. So, it's the most common cancer of dysgenetic gonads and see, this is the thing which I have said you. Ovarian dermoid or dermoid cyst. Dermoid cyst is the most common ovarian tumor of pregnancy. True. But if they ask you, most common ovarian cancer of pregnancy, most common ovarian cancer of pregnancy, then it is not the dermoid cyst, then the answer will be dysgerminoma. So, most common ovarian cancer of a pregnancy. Most of the time, this dysgerminoma is a unilateral, it's unilateral, but sometimes. It can be bilateral. Now, if I ask you, what is the tumor, epithelial ovarian cell tumor, which is 100% unilateral? 100% unilateral? It's Brenner, rubbery consistency, solid in nature, rubbery nature, like, you know, it just feels like a rubber, solid consistency. Bus, in the nest, Walthard cell nest, that's a Brenner, 100% unilateral. Okay, now, why I'm repeating, you know, there is one more germ cell tumor which we are going to discuss later in the next slide. That's also 100% unilateral. What is the next germ cell tumor after dysgerminoma? First is dermoid cyst, teratoma. Second one is dysgerminoma. The third one is yolk sac tumor. Yolk sac tumor, yes. Yolk sac tumors are 100% unilateral in nature. Okay, we'll discuss later, don't worry. Now, this dysgerminomas, they are mostly unilateral. Mostly unilateral but not 100% unilateral. 
they are mostly unilateral but sometimes they can be bilateral also and this deosteomenoma are the only germ cell tumors which are radio sensitive in nature which means they are like highly sensitive to radiation if they are highly sensitive to radiation you can easily destroy these tumors if you can easily destroy them if you can easily kill these cancers that will be having good prognosis so prognosis is very much good so best prognosis among all gcts because they are highly radio sensitive okay now so what are the hpv hpv findings histopathological findings what you can see is the nests of cells you can see at the nests of cells which are surrounded by the thick septa here also you can see the nests of cells which are surrounded by this thick septa okay guys walthard cell nest walthard cell nest is seen in brenners with the coffee bean nuclei okay coffee bean nuclei here the cells like you know the nests of the tumor cells which are separated by a thick septa if they ask you this exact like you know terminology is important nests of cells separated by fibrous septa seen in a dysgeminoma walthard cell nest brenner's tumor tumor marker what is the tumor marker of dysgeminoma so what is the main tumor marker guys dysgeminoma d l d l so lactate dehydrogenase is the main important tumor marker but you can also find hcg and plaque can also be seen okay well and good so we have seen all the important points about the this germy noma now let's go further with the yolk sac tumor see this yolk sac tumor can also be called as endodermal sinus tumor important point is it's the worst tumor it's the most malignant out of all the out of all the germ cell tumors what are the germ cell tumors dermoid cyst like you know dermoid cyst is benign dermoid cyst is benign that immature teratomas are there no immature teratomas uh, dysgeminoma this yolk sac tumor embryonal cancer out of choriocarcinoma out of all these germ cell tumors the worst guy is this yolk sac tumor so what is the tumor marker of yolk sac tumor yolk sac fetus so alpha fetoprotein yes the tumor marker is alpha fetoprotein the main tumor marker it's the most malignant germ cell tumor if it's the most malignant germ cell tumor so definitely this would be having the worst prognosis so it is having 100 post like you know it's having worst prognosis and the before slide itself i have said you that the germ cell tumor which is a hundred percent unilateral is yolk sac tumor epithelial ovarian tumor which are hundred percent unilateral are brenner's walthard cell nest coffee bean nuclei i'm repeating why because you know these are the points to be noted now see grossly this tumor just looks like a, like yellowish in color okay fleshy yellowish in color and you can see some hemorrhagic areas which why because this tumor is a friable in nature like you know very much a delicate in nature so it's a friable and yellow in color now it's a most rapidly progressing tumor so that's the reason why it's more malignant it's most rapidly progressing more malignancy worst prognosis so what is the germ cell tumor which is having the very good prognosis just before one this germinoma why because it's highly radi radio sensitive tumor now this is highly malignant worst prognosis now hp like you no know, hp findings histopathological findings now if you do histopathological examination there you are going to see schiller dual bodies or glomeruloid body what is the schiller dual bodies schiller dual bodies are nothing but there is a central capillary you can see there is a central capillary which are surrounded by the tumor cell see there is a central capillary which are surrounded by the tumor cells and these tumor cells in turn they are separated by a space cystic space so what exactly are these glomeruloid bodies this why they are called as glomeruloid bodies first why because they just looks like a glomerulus so glomeruloid body or schiller dual bodies are nothing but a central capillary surrounded by the tumor cells in turn surrounded by the cystic space so they are called as schiller dual bodies which are seen with the yolk sac tumor and the main important tumor marker is alpha fetoprotein but you can also see ldh and alpha 1 fetoprotein but beta hcg is not seen here okay so we have completed the important germ cell 
tumors in the part 3 of the video let's discuss about the sex card stromal tumors and metastatic tumors of the ovary thank you